Hey everyone, this is EYA on EYA Censored Supernatural Bible Changes on YouTube, and today is the 26th of October 2022, and I'm glad you guys are here tonight. I don't know if anybody's listening right now. Oh, it looks like a few of you, which is great. It was an impromptu live stream. I was going to do it earlier today, um, so I put out a notification early this morning that I was going to do it this afternoon, but then I realized, oh, I was, I had too much to do. I was working on my website and some other things and I just didn't feel like doing it. And then tonight, like 15 minutes ago, I just felt like, Hey, I think I'm ready to go and do this. I have the energy to go and do it. And I want to get this information out to you. Of course, I've had it all prepared, um, since this morning and, um, I want, I'm, I just want to get it out to you guys. So if you're new to my channel, we are seeing lying signs and wonders happen right now. Our Bibles are under satanic assault. Now, if you're new to my channel, please stick around and go grab your own Bible because we're going to be showing, I'm going to be showing you some Bible changes tonight. Not a lot, but I came across something um, this morning and it's kind of jaw dropping and I'd like to get your input about this, especially from you history buffs, okay? Because I found something, and then it led me to talk about some of the Bible changes that we see today, because it is correlated. You'll understand as I go through this with you tonight. Hold on one quick second. So I want to go ahead and um, just say hi to you guys. Let's see here. Hi, Rebecca and Two Death and Cheyenne and Martino and Brian, Jesus Christ is Lord and Cynthia and um, Karen. God bless you guys. Hi, Angie and Daydreamer and Jay and Red Storm and Karma and Angelia. Praise the Lord. Hey, you guys. So I have some, I have a new Mandela effect to share with you outside of the Bible changes. And I'm going to share that with you in just a minute, but let me go ahead and just share with you what I was doing today. And I would love to get your input. I sent out some emails to get your feedback because I really value this community so much. And I really want to hear what you need in order to help you share the truth about the Bible changes. I'm wondering if some of you have some material that you'd like to share with me that I can go ahead and put up on the website um, so people can have access to it. So let me go ahead and show you something that I was working on today. And uh, let's see here. Let me go ahead and share this with you. Hold on one quick second. So I was working on my website today. Now I have been so busy it's truncated here. Oh, let me see what's going on here. So I have been so busy between um, working full time and then I was moving and then covering the Bible changes and doing live streams and videos that I really was just pressed in on all sides and didn't have time to go ahead and update or add to or enhance my website that I've had for a couple of years. And my, my website is bible-changes.com. And I want to share a few things with you. Just I want to show you guys what I'm working on and some ideas that I have for the community. And I would love your input, especially those of you who are um, social media experts and those of you maybe who are in, in, into website design. I've had a couple people respond to me, which is just so wonderful. And this is their background. And so they've been able to get some insight. And then some who don't have experience with website de development are still giving their input about what would be useful. I'm all ears and I'm totally teachable because I want it to be a, um, a platform that can really be utilized. Because I don't know how long I'll be here on YouTube, right? With all the craziness. And I've had so many channels censored and um, videos taken down. So you can, you know, for now, you can find me over here on Supernatural Bible Changes. Or I just say Bible-Changes.com. But let me show you what I've been doing. So I've updated the website. This is the homepage. So I have this video here. 
and then I have an example of a Bible change, and then I have this that I just put together today. I'll, I'll turn the volume off. But it's just a quick video with some sound of just rain and thunder of the Bible changes. So I have this available on my website. And there are over 156 um, slides in this particular uh, video. So I thought that would be really helpful for you guys. Another one is um, I have a salvation page. And then I have Bible change examples. And our sister Rebecca is helping to upload some new um, slides to this page. And this is just where I'm providing um, screenshots. I'll just go ahead and show you. If you open it up, I clicked on one of the images. It will take a, a little bit of time to load. There you go. And then you can just literally go through on my website and just press the arrow button. And it will go through each of these. So I put up obviously several, not all the ones that I have my hard drive, but again, our sister Rebecca is doing this. Um, we'll be uploading some screenshots that she has as well. So again, this is on my website just to provide some resources to people um, that are sharing Bible changes and for you to also lead people to the website if they want to check out Bible changes, okay? And then it has a link to my YouTube channel under videos. And then what I've done here, you guys, is that I have a link that says join the remnant list. This will take people directly to that form to complete, to join the community, and to be able to get on the email list. Then I also have, um, several weeks ago, I let you guys know that I'd be interested in knowing if you guys have any Bible questions and that, you know, periodically we would answer, I'd answer them or maybe a panel we could answer them. I don't have very many questions right now, so I'm just waiting to get some more, but this is an opportunity for people to ask questions. And then I also went ahead and I uploaded with the permission of our sister, Rebecca, I went ahead and I uploaded, hold on one quick second. I went ahead and I uploaded the flyer And this is a flyer that you guys can actually go ahead and download. So here it is. It's that um, the one for you can print, you can download here and you can print it or send it even electronically to people that you know. Um, so yeah, take a look at this and feel free to download it. Now I also wanna mention I'm putting together some other content. Let me see if I can make this smaller now. Go back. Um, so that's a flyer is right there. And what I'm going to do by the grace of God is just put up some more resources for everyone. Um, I'll put together some quizzes. I'll put together some other brochures and things like that, that you can distribute to people. You can send electronically or you can download and print it out. Or even if you want to use it as a reference for yourself, that's completely fine. Whatever you want to use it for. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, by the grace of God, put together some more information for you guys. I have a link to my Rumble and then um, an email page. And that's what I want to share with you. So let me know. Um, again, the oh, the other thing I'm going to do that I haven't talked to you guys about is that I'm going to go ahead and create a, um, a blog. And... I thought this would be really good maybe to have a team of contributors. So if you're somebody who has, again, experience in writing, um, I would love to hear from you. Another thing I'm going to do on this website is put together some, um, some residual evidence. So if you have any images of uh, residual of anything, um, that would be helpful to share with people regarding the Bible changes or even any Mandela effects, as long as they're pretty common Mandela effects. Um, I'd love to be able to put it on the website as well. So there's all types of potential here. And I'm just really feeling the unction of the Holy spirit to spend time on this site, building it out and then creating more resources, um, for the community and for those that aren't even in the community that might just stumble upon the website for information about Bible changes. 
So I appreciate your prayer. Um, what did I take down earlier? <clears throat> oh, I mentioned, oh, Dorothy, I took down, I was going to do a show earlier today. And then I just felt like I was busy working on my website and some other things. And I just didn't have the energy to do it this afternoon. So then tonight I realized, oh, I have some energy. I should go ahead and do a live chat, a live stream and talk about the changes to America. You'll understand in just a minute. Um, okay. So let me go ahead and share some stuff with you. And, um, let me know if you guys can hear me. Um, do I do web development? You know, this is through WordPress and I've had, I've built different websites before, um, for myself and businesses and things like that. But, um, I would say I, I, I'm self-taught with HTML, a little bit of CSS, but I'm not super, I'm not super sophisticated. It will take me a while to learn something, but, um, yeah. So anyway, this is my website. So anyway, you guys take a look at that. And again, if you guys have any resources, if you yourself have any resources that you think would be a benefit to put on the website regarding Bible changes, can you just shoot me an email and you can drop a line to me at EYA report at Gmail. I'll put it in live chat. Um, but you can just go ahead and just, you know, send me a line with some residual. I would really appreciate that. Okay. So let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and just dive into this. And this is where I want to start. I want to ask you guys, hold on. I want to hear from you. Do you guys know that Americus Vespucci founded, that the America was named after a guy named Americus Vespucci. He was an Italian. He was an Italian. Um, hold on a minute. He was an Italian explorer. And America was named after him. So that's kind of interesting. Let me know if you guys have heard of him. Um, so when I typed in his name, and forgive me, but I actually forget what prompted me to even look this up. It was some information that I heard. Um, and so that's what caused me to do a little digging here. So America Vespucci, when I typed in the name America Vespucci, it typed up, it printed up, came up all these images and information. However, when I went to go do more research, I saw this guy, Amerigo Vespucci, saying that his name wasn't Americus, but Amerigo. Amerigo Vespucci, and then Amerigo Vespucci, and so forth. All these Amerigo Vespucci's. Well, that doesn't make sense. America, America is named after someone by the name of Amerigo, like a merry, like a merry go round, or also like a merry America needs to go. Amerigo. <clears throat> Hold on, you guys. I have to take a sip of water here. <clears throat> it's nighttime, and for a reason, this is what happens at nighttime. Hold on. So this is a Mandela effect. So Americus Vespucci has now been changed to Amerigo Vespucci. Now stay with me because I'm going to show you a few things. Let me start here. So this is from Wiki Wikipedia, and we see Amerigo Vespucci, an Italian merchant and explorer and navigator from the Republic of Florence, from whose name the term America is derived. Well, look over here to the right. Do you see this guy? This is a portrait of him a posthumous portrait in the Giovio series at the Uffizi in Florence, right? Serica 1568. But when I click on this, look at this. His name is Americus, not Amerigo. So his name here is Americus Vespucci. It's a Mandela effect. 
because now he's called Amerigo Vespucci. So I thought that was really interesting that his name changed. Let me see what you guys are saying out here. You know, Jay, of course, Wikipedia is a joke. Of course, you find all types of things because people can rewrite it. But if you look up, okay, if you're, I'm going to show you a few things here. Amerigo Vespucci, exploration, history of things, Amerigo, history of my America, Amerigo, history.com, Amerigo. So the point is, I've already looked these up. What I was trying to show you is that everywhere he's saying, everywhere he's saying that his name was Amerigo. However, there is some residual, and I'm going to show you that. One is even on the Wikipedia website for this guy, Amerigo Vespucci, with a picture of him right here on the right with the inscription Americas Vespucci. So that's very interesting. There's a residual right there for his name. But let me also show you this. This is from um, now, this is from a book, and this is written. It's uh, in German, but you can see this is really interesting. It says Americus Vespucci, right? There's his name, and if we even look on this on this page here of this book, it says Americus Vespucci, Americus, not Amerigo, but Americus. So this is just a, a book about the explorer. It's an old book from 1748. You see that? From Hamburg. But they're calling him Americus. Americus Vespucci. Americus. And then even in the header, Americus Vespucci. But then if you scroll down, take a look at this. It says here, Amerigo. Do you see that? Amerigo. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, but then down here in the index, it says Americus. Do you see that? Let me zoom in here. It's larger for you guys to see. So this is a Mandela effect in process. Down here, associated names, Amerigo. Craziness. So yeah, so this again is a book written by Americus, Americus Vespucci. So the next thing I want to show you is this. This again is Americus. This is obviously Americus Vespucci. Oh, I was going to show you this. Give me a minute. So in typing in Americus Vespucci, if I go to images, you can see, let me zoom in here. You said Americus Vespucci. This is for some of his work. Americus Vespucci. There's Amerigo. There's Americus Vespucci right there. In fact, I actually had this open earlier. So let me go ahead and. I don't have to, oh, here it is. Maybe this is it. Oh, let me show this to you. So this is this is from Royal Museums Greenwich. And this again, you can see Americus Vespucci. Do you see that? Let me make sure I'm still live. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to show you is that we have residual for Americus. That was his name, not Amerigo, which sounds like Americans can go, right? Or America go. Americus. More residual, another, another drawing. Americus Vespucci, his first voyage. America Vespucci's first voyage, landing at Paria, Venezuela. So rather interesting. I was happy to find this. And here's some more. Americus Vespucius. And then you can see his name right there at the very bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can zoom in. Do you see his name? Americus Vespucius in the, in the bottom left of this drawing. So, yeah, so his name is America. And then even when I, t this is interesting, when I'm scrolling over the image,
Do you see the writing? Let me see if you can see it here. If I scroll over the image, it said, let me see if I can do it again. Oh, uh, was that interesting? It's not, oh, there we go. Americus Vespucius, there it is. Americus Vespucius. So I think that's just really interesting. Oh, there's a better image. There we go. Americus Vespucius, right there. That was his name. That is his name. But now, all over the place, you can see the spelling of his name is Amerigo. I think you guys get the point. Oh, there's another one that I found right there. Let me see. There's Amerigo Vespucci. So what I did is, in fact, I actually need to show you this. Um, show you this, this. Well, I want to show you a couple of things talking about America is the word state has been multiplied in scripture. Now I remember state in the Bible, obviously talking about the, the, the last state would be better than from the book of Titus. I think it was, let's go down here. Where is it? Um, isn't that interesting? It's not even there. Huh, I wonder, I remember in the book of Titus, it talked about the word state, and it's no longer there. But anyway, let me go ahead and show you some of the definitions of state. I'm going to scroll up here. It's 15 times in the New, in the Old Testament and New Testament. Genesis 43, 7, and they said, the man asked us straightly of our state. The man asked us straightly of our state and of our kindred. Well, that is just new for me. And there's no strongest number associated with it. Scrolling down, 2 Chronicles 24, 13. They set the house of God in his state. How weird is that? They set the house of God in his state. And let's take a look at the definition of state, H4971. And we see the word state is composition. The strongest number, H4971, is translated to composition, tail, state, and measure. Measurement, proportion, tail, a tail or a tally, measurement, proportion. The number of ingredients, proportion. A measure, composition. That's a new word for me in the Bible. According to the composition, after the composition of it. Anyway, I don't have time to be researching that, but I want to show you that state is new for me in those verses. And then going, going down, according to the state of the king, according to the state of the king. And that's a, okay, now wait, I have to show this to you. This is crazy. So one definition of state we just looked at is measure or composition or tail. That was for the first definition of state. The second one is really weird. Well, as if that's not weird for state, but let me go and show you what the meaning is here. Do you guys recognize the Strong's number, H3027? It's the Strong's number for the word hand. Let me read this to you. And they, and they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another and royal wine in abundance, according to the state of the king. And then again, according to the state of the king, in the next verse. Well, in these two verses, the state, this is shocking, means this. According to the state of the king, is what that those two verses said in the book of Esther. And this word has been translated to the word hand, by, consecrate, him, power, 
them places tenant the co-site miscellaneous 130 times. That's where state would be included. And the crazy thing is, as if those definitions aren't crazy in of themselves, what do they have in common? When we scroll down to the outline of biblical usage, it's talking about a hand, a monument, repetition, tenant, a phallus. A phallus for the word, the state of the king. The phallus of the king? Yeah, it's really offensive. It's offensive in so many ways. And then you see all these other definitions for the same word, really, really crazy. The, and then of course, just to remember, just to, I want to remind you, it was talking about the king, the state of the king. That's what that verse said in the book of Esther. And the word state is the same strong number as hand. And the definition is the human hand once used the feet of a lizard. Now this was again, we discovered this several years ago, back in 2016, talking about, you know, the royal family, the reptilians, the global elite. But here you have the human hand once used the feet of a lizard as being like a human hand. Again, this is for Strong's number, just to show you and remind you, because you can do this on your own and look this up. Strong's number... H3027 is right here, according to the state of the king. There's a Strong's number. So obviously it's been altered. Um, so anyway, I think state has been added. Like this one, Isaiah 22, 19 says this, and I will drive thee from thy station. I don't know if they're driving in a convertible or BMW, or maybe some other jalopy, okay? Maybe a Pinto, maybe a maybe a rest out Pinto. And I will drive thee from thy station and from thy state shall he pull thee down. So I don't know from Michigan to California to New York, New Jersey, not sure which state. Do you see how crazy this language is? And I will drive thee from thy station, like a railroad station, and from thy state shall he pull thee down. So let's take a look at this definition of state, H4619, H4612, excuse me. And this state has been translated to attendance, office, place, or state. Attendance, office, function, service, Station, office, post, office, function, or service. It's just really strange. Kind of reminds me of the post office. Anyway, we do have mail in the Bible now. Did you know that? Not a mail. M-A-I-L, coat of mail, is now in the Bible. Okay, so state, I think, has been multiplied. Then we even have this verse, Ezekiel 23, 41 says, And sadist upon a stately bed. That's right. And sadist, like, you know, sadist, sadism, and sadist upon a stately bed. How weird is that? And then stately is age 35, 20, and it's been translated to abundance, riches, wealth, glorious. Carriage. Do you see that? Carriage. Okay, I need to move along, but I think state has been multiplied in scripture, so I just want to share that with you. And then I wanted to show you guys something about the word, again, Americus. And I was trying to think, well, why, other than Amer changing Americus Vespucci to Amerigo, which sounds like America goes or America can go, you know what I mean? or maybe even go to America. But I looked up Americus and I found this. There's Americus tires. I've never heard of Americus tires before. Maybe you have them on your vehicle. I've never, I've never heard of them before. Americus tires. Well, of course that reminded me of a new word in the Bible, which I'll get to in just a minute. 
but I also wanted to see if there was expected shortages for tires because of this pandemic and the deliberate takedown of the United States. Of course, it's a global recession, but of course we know that there's, this has definitely been a contrived, deliberate takedown of global economies. But anyway, America's tires. So I found this article, the impact of supply chain disruption on tire manufacturing. And this report maps out the global tire manufacturing supply chain from a raw material sourcing through manufacturing, distribution, and so forth. So this goes into talking about the the supply chain for tires is um, is in trouble, basically. Of course, it gives um, the reasons for C-19. Plandemic has significantly impacted sectors dependent on complex global supply chains, such as tire manufacturing, as well as the automotive sector. I'm not going to read all this to you, but I just think it's really interesting because you guys might know and remember this, that we now have the word tire in the Bible four times, all in the Old Testament. Like here we have Jehu was come to Jezreel, of course, a grammar mistake. Jezebel heard of it and she painted her face and tired her head. That's right. She tired her head. And she looked out the window. She tired her head and she looked out the window. Isaiah 3.18 says this crazy verse. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet. And their calls. And their round tires like the moon. Ezekiel 24.17 Forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead, bind the tire of thine head upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. Ezekiel 24, 23, and your tires shall be upon your heads, and your shoes upon your feet. Have you ever seen anyone put a tire on their head? Only, I think, when they've had to carry it a long distance. What about you? So now tires are now in the Bible. America's tires. And now there's a shortage of tires. Just follow me, okay? So we know, talk, going back to America's Vespucci, the Italian navigator and explorer, we now have the Italian band in the Bible one time. And then we also have Italy now in the Bible four times. That's right. Italy in Acts 18, two Acts 27, one Acts 27, six and Hebrews 13, 24. And even says in Hebrews 13, 24 to salute all of them that have the rule over you and all the saints, they of Italy salute you. It's very Nazi-like, very fascist-like. We've talked about the word salute being embedded in the scripture. It's new. And now we have Italy now in the Bible. But I just think it's really interesting, given that Americus Vespucci was an Italian explorer. Okay, I need to move along. So then Amerigo is... Uh, the new name for Americus. And it made me, I was, I recalled the phrase go to in scripture. It doesn't make sense. It isn't like I'm going to go to the store, but let me show you how this phrase is now inserted in the scripture. Genesis 11, three says this, and they said one to another, go to, that's right. They said one to another, go to. Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. It goes on. They even had slime. Slime is a new word in the King James Bible. Genesis 11, 4. And they said, go to. Let us build us a city and a tower. 
Genesis eleven seven. Go to, let us let us go down, and there confound their language. This is when they're talking about the Tower of Babel, of course. Again, the phrase go to, or maybe yeah, go to. Genesis. Um, let me show you another one. Um, trying to find another one. Here's another one. Genesis thirty eight sixteen, and he turned unto her by the way and said, "Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee." It's a strange, it's a strange phrase we're finding plopped into the Bible. Go to. So I thought that was interesting. I want to share that with you. Now, I want to show this to you guys because I shared this with you a while ago that this word, this word popped into the Bible in Deuteronomy 22, 19. And they shall immerse him in an hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel. And it goes on. Damsel is a new word in the Bible. Immerse. I've never heard the word immerse in my life until I found that. And they shall immerse him. It sounds like America, you know, immerse. America. If you were to do a hard C, America. Well, the meaning of immerse is this. Punish. Condemned, surely, to fine, to punish, condemn, mulked. Never heard of the word mulked before. To fine or to punish, to be fined, to be punished, to be mulked, be mulked. And indeed, here in the United States, and I know other nations are under oppression, but we're seeing a lot of things happen here in the United States that is really um, unheard of, but almost like America is just falling apart. You know what I'm saying? Like we're being punished, but it's a deliberate punishment. I think there's judgment happening with the Lord, right? Judgment from the Lord, but then there's also man-made punishment that's happening, a complete betrayal from within, the destruction of the United States happening from ungodly men and women who've infiltrated our system with socialist ideals. Anyway, I just think it's really interesting that immerse has now plopped into the Bible. It means punish. Do you guys remember immerse in the Bible? And then I want to show you this definition of molted. This is from uh, the free dictionary, a penalty such as a fine, to penalize by fining or demanding forfeiture, to take something from another person by means of unseemly or deceptive methods, to take something from another by means of unseemly. Why am I showing this to you? Because I believe our nation is being destroyed from within, as I mentioned, and our land is being given over to aliens. You know what I'm saying? And alien is a new word in the Bible. But I just think it's really interesting how America was founded by a guy named Americus Vespucci, and his name just changed to Amerigo. I also want to show you guys this. I didn't bring this actually I'll do this. I did Americus. Stay with me. There we have it in Flickr. It says Americus. Do you see that? I was in a Flickr shot. Americus Vespucci. But let me show you guys something here. If I go to all, if I just do Americus, right? I want to show you guys this. I want to go to news. And I'm going to do Americus Vespucci. Stay with me. I want to show you guys something. So I typed in Americus Vespucci. And look what I found. Catamaran crashes into Amerigo Vespucci in Venice. This was 16 days ago. Italian Navy ship Amerigo Vespucci arrives in Valletta 
that was 62 days ago, the Italian Navy ship Amerigo Vespucci. I showed you how Italian is now in the Bible, like an Italian band. Well, we also have this in the Bible now. We now have Navy of Ships now in the Bible. And this is a new name for me right there. But we have Navy of Ships now in the King James Bible. Go back here. An Italian Navy ship arrived in Valletta. Um, scrolling down. America's lawyer charged in Capitol riot wants his guns back. There was a, let me see something here for a minute. Then if I type in Amerigo, to see what, if there is any recent news on Amerigo, there's a catamaran. There's that Italian Navy ship. I'm just going through here really quickly. So I just think it's and then Amerigo on track to top annual copper production. Amerigo Resources. It's just interesting. Let me know what you guys remember. But do you guys remember Americus Vespucci or Amerigo? Or is it something you never knew at all, which is okay? But let me know if you guys, if you guys see the same Bible changes I do. I just think it's really interesting. This is an example tonight of seeing Bible changes that are happening outside of Scripture, these lying signs and wonders. We're seeing the names of people are changing. And sometimes, like tonight, I was able to find residual, which disproves the whole idea or notion of parallel universes, right? But it's really crazy. They're rewriting history on every account. But I think the reason why they're also changing Americus to Amerigo, it's a play on words. Let me see what you guys are saying out here. Christopher Columbus did not discover America um, because America already existed. Did you know that? America existed. There were Indians that lived on U.S. soil before the British came. But America was named after the explorer Americus Vespucci, which makes perfect sense. But now his name changed to Amerigo. Deborah remembers the word Amerigo. Then how can you explain Americus, the residual? Okay, you guys, that's what I wanted to share with you guys, but I just think it's really interesting. Mercer sounds like a pharmaceutical company. That's Merck. That's true. It does sound like that, doesn't it? Merck, M-E-R-K. Yeah, go-to is just bizarre. Hey, David. Hey, David, question for you. Do you mind? Could, can I share that document that you sent a long time ago about the changes to scripture? I'd love to be able to put that on my website as a reference. And I'm happy to give you, of course, credit for that but let me know if any of you guys have any information to help with Bible changes, any information you put together, 
that I could I could link on the website would be so helpful. Anyway, you guys, um, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys, and that's it. I'm going to keep it really short tonight. Um, Rebecca Davis says she remembers Americus. Mandela Miles says he has it on a flat earth map. It's so crazy. It really is so crazy, the times that we're in. And, um, yeah, we've been told so many lies. They're just layers of deception, layers upon layers. But anyway, you guys, I'm going to keep this really short tonight um, because of the hour. And um, by the grace of God, we'll do a um, a live stream on maybe a call-in show on, on Friday evening. I'll put out an announcement about that. And I look forward to gathering with you guys and be praying for our time together. Be praying for those who will call in. Oh, I just pray God's favor and blessing over each of you in Jesus' name. Father, you know the needs and the cries of the heart of this community. And I pray, God, that you would be an abundant responder to the hearts and the cries of your people right now. Lord, you see our struggles and the burdens that we're carrying. We just offer them up to you and we say, not my will, but thine be done. Be glorified, God, in our midst. I pray that you will continue to bless the work of our hands and continue to make us um, absolutely disciplined to do the work that you've asked us to do in joy, in faith, in patience, in kindness. I pray that we would exude the fruit of the Spirit in all that we do. And I pray, Father, that this community would begin to see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their lives as never before, as you've called them, appointed them, you appointed us to be able to see and to behold what's happening today. It's amazing. So keep us, Lord, on track and keep us, keep us, Lord, in your presence and help us to walk in the spirit, Lord, that we would not carry out the deeds of the flesh, that we would glorify your name in Jesus' name. All right, everybody, that's it. That's all I'm going to go ahead and share. It's great to see you guys tonight. And I look forward to doing a call-in show in a couple of days with you. And maybe tomorrow, um, I have some other things I want to share with you too, but sometimes just doing small, shorter videos. I have another one I'm going to do. I'll probably do a really short video on this other one I want to do. Or maybe I'll do a video tomorrow, a live stream to talk about it. Because it's rather interesting. But anyway, you guys, I love you all. And I pray God's blessing and favor over each of you in Jesus' name. Bye, everyone.